All right, so see if you can answer this question. I guarantee none of you will get this right. What do you think the first photography job that I ever got paid for was? I'm gonna give you five seconds, all right? Five, four, three, two, one. You got your answer. Lunch with Santa photos when I was a kid. You see, my dad, he was a photographer on the side growing up. It was kind of a side hustle for him. And around the holiday times, he would do this gig where he made photos at this lunch with Santa thing. And essentially, I was the photo assistant during these gigs. I think I was in like fifth or sixth grade at the time. And what I had to do was write down the file numbers for the digital files on the envelopes that people gave to him with their money inside so he could send the photos and coordinate who was who. It's a pretty good little experience. Experience, but it taught me an important fundamental of photography and that is that this business is a hustle It's up to you how you decide to make money. There are so many different things that you can do So today we are going over 33 different ways you can make money with your photography now Obviously, I'm not gonna go too in-depth on each one of these because this video would be three hours long But it's intended to give you some ideas and help you brainstorm different ways that can make you money with your photography And my biggest piece of advice for a video like this if you want to apply it to your business is look for the things that apply to your life where you have a competitive advantage. Something on this list will stand out to you and you'll say, hey, I think I have a leg up on everyone else trying to do this. And if you find yourself thinking that, that is a perfect opportunity for you to make money with your photography. Now, before we get into it, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Evan Ramp. If you've never been here before, I'm the founder of ModernCreativeMoney.com. And this channel is for photographers looking to make money, explore ideas, and live a better creative life. So if that sounds like you, hit that subscribe button. And big thank you to ShipStation for sponsoring today's video. Head to ShipStation.com slash Evan to start a free 60-day trial. So let's get into it. 33 ways to make money with your photography. Number one is passport photos. Now, this is something that I watched a guy do every single weekend at an old office that I worked at. He'd always have people coming in and out to create passport images for them. Now, clearly, this guy had some type of marketing tactic to get people in the door for passport photos, and he knew the ins and outs of the rules behind passport photography, but it seemed like a viable way that he was making money, and I have a feeling he was packaging it with family photos or he was trying to upsell families that he'd already worked with when they needed passports they came to him. Now number two is YouTube. You can be just like me and you can create YouTube videos centered around your photography. This can make you money via AdSense and one great thing about YouTube is it's also a search engine. So if you have information to provide to people and they're looking for it, maybe you have a certain type of camera that you can review or something like that, people can go on Google, look up what they're trying to find and you have the answer and you can get paid for it and you can get paid while you're sleeping. One great thing about YouTube videos is they last forever. Number three is travel guides. Maybe you live in a city or you like to travel and go a lot of places and you're familiar with where the best photos are. You can create travel guides online that you can either sell or make money through the Google advertising that shows up on your website, but you can provide people with the answers that they're looking for online through your photography and through your expertise of locations either in your cities or the cities that you've been to. Number four is is camera guides. So this is the exact same concept, but instead of going to a place, you can teach people how to use a certain type of camera. Maybe, for example, me, I'm familiar with the Leica SL2 system. I could create some type of guide online breaking down exactly how to use this camera and get the most out of it. So when people buy this camera, they can come download that guide either for free or they can pay money for it and I can get paid that way or I can get paid through the Google ads on the website and make some money that way. That's another thing you can think about if you're very familiar with your camera camera system. Number five is gear rentals. I've talked about this before. Maybe you have a camera, you have lenses that you haven't been using a lot, or they just sit on your shelf. You can put them up on various different rental sites. One of the most popular ones is ShareGrid. You can check that out if you have a lot of gear laying around. Number six is presets. Now, this is something that is extremely saturated, but if you have a very unique editing style and you're creating images and sharing them online, you can put your presets on your website. People can come and buy them to mimic the look that you're creating. In my case, I sell presets, but I sell a preset module, which operates more as receipts for my edits. Number seven is online teaching. Once again, maybe you're very familiar with a certain type of photography. Maybe you understand how to do landscapes. You understand how to do family portraits. You understand weddings. Whatever it is, you can create a guide online and sell it to people. You can market it through social media. This is a pretty easy business setup that a lot of people use. Number eight is workshops. Now, I've talked about this before. Maybe you're someone who is very familiar with a certain city. You understand the ins and outs of how to get good photos at a certain location. You can sell 
sell workshop packages to people who are also interested in that. And one of the great things about workshops is you really only have to find a very small group of people who are interested in the thing that you have expertise in. It's very difficult and intimidating to think about going to a new place to make photos. So if you have that information and you have the right marketing strategy, you can bring people to wherever you live or you can meet them in a place and you can give them all the ins and outs and the guides to making the best images possible and save them all that hard work. That's what they're paying for. That's the value in that. Number nine is online art sales. Now, if you are an art photographer, you're someone who does landscapes, street photography, whatever it is, you can sell these prints on your website and you can offer them to people who find them interesting. Now, once again, there is a marketing element to this. You have to find those people who find this interesting and you have to do actions that target the audience that you're looking for, but it is a viable way to make money. Now, number 10 is gallery art sales. Now, this is the exact same concept as selling your art online, but you're having someone who has a little bit more clout and a little bit more business knowledge helping you facilitate these sales. There's still a lot of galleries all over the country, and if you find one who has an audience that is interested in the thing that you're creating, you can approach them and potentially get your work in these galleries. I've had my work featured in certain galleries around Atlanta, and I made sales through those galleries because their clientele was interested in the things that I was creating. So it was basically a mutual relationship between myself and between the gallery to where we all made money and we all benefited, but it also helps to have that middle person who basically has the audience already for you. It takes out that step of finding the audience if you're selling the prints online. Now, number 11 is hosting your own group gallery. This is something we did back in the day as a way for us to make money with our photography when we were all starting out. What we did was we would work with hotels in the Atlanta area. We would invite all of our friends out. The hotel would get all of the bar sales. We would get to keep all of our art sales. And essentially, we would have a party centered around our photography. And it was really cool because everyone's audiences kind of mixed together. I found people who didn't know about me. People who knew about me found other people. And everyone made sales and made a little bit of side money that way. Now, number 12 is subject-related art sales. Now, this is different than your street photography prints. This is you creating a website centered around a specific thing. So maybe you live in Denver, Colorado. You create a website called Denver Photo Prints. And everything you sell is targeting people who are simply looking for photos in Denver. Your name as an artist isn't attached to it. You're simply just trying to sell photo prints of a particular thing that people are interested in and you find a way to target that exact audience. This is different than being an artist, trying to get in a gallery, building a name for yourself. This is you simply saying, people find this interesting. I'm going to create prints for them. They can buy them and it doesn't matter that I'm involved or not. All they care about is the subject matter. Now, number 13 is merchandise. So this kind of piggybacks off of what I was just talking about. If you're someone who has a very specific subject matter to your photography, once again, we'll use Denver photos as an example. You can create merchandise centered around these Denver photos. You can sell coffee mugs, you can sell t-shirts, hoodies, whatever you want to do. You can create physical products that incorporate your photography into it for the people who are interested in the particular subject matter that you are centering your photography around. Now, once again, this is cool because you as an artist and who you are, doesn't matter. You're simply looking for people who are interested in a specific thing and you're creating merchandise that incorporates your photography into it for that particular group of people. Now, speaking about all this e-commerce stuff, this is a great time to mention the sponsor on today's video, ShipStation. If you're running a creative business online and you're selling physical products, one of the biggest issues you're going to run into is shipping. Shipping is not only expensive, it can be complicated and time consuming, but no one solves these problems like ShipStation. Before I had ShipStation, I was handwriting address on envelopes and I was standing in long lines at the post office. Not anymore. Now when I sell photo books and photo prints on my website at ramp.com and merchandise on 1826.com, I can quickly and effectively process orders through ShipStation's easy to use user interface. And ShipStation is trusted by over 100,000 e-commerce stores and they recently added their services to the UK, Canada, and Australia. ShipStation easily integrates with every e-commerce platform. ShipStation easily integrates with almost every e-commerce platform out there, including the large website hosting platform that sponsors this channel that I use for my websites. So whatever your needs are, whether it's for a creative business or simply solving all the problems that come with the post office, ShipStation is hooking up every viewer on this channel with a free 60-day trial. Just go to ShipStation.com slash Evan. Ship more in less time for a lot less money. That's ShipStation.com slash Evan to start a free 60-day trial. Now, number 14 on this list is Instagram Reels. So if you're a photographer who is creating 
creating online media, something really easy you can do is shift into Instagram Reels. What I like to do is basically take photo sets that I post on Instagram, turn them into Reels by adding one video clip at the beginning, adding a caption to that, which essentially would be my caption for the photos, and then flipping through the images like the gallery that people would have when they swipe through on Instagram. This is extremely easy to do, and Instagram is now paying people Reels bonuses. Now, it does take a little bit of time to build up to the point where you can get paid for your Reels, but if you're someone who is constantly adding them to the platform, they are growing rapidly right now. The number 15 is the tried and true wedding photography. Everyone knows that this is a way you can make money with your photography. I'm not even going to get into it too much, but this is very lucrative, especially if you have an interpersonal network of people who are getting married. If you're a very social person, you probably know a ton of people who are getting married. And if you have a wedding photography business, it can be very easy to grow that business if you have that network around you. Now, number 16 is engagements. Once again, if you have that interpersonal network of people you know who are getting engaged, it's very easy to grow this business. People are always going to be getting engaged. And now with social media being as popular as it is, people want to share their engagement photos online. You can be that guy or you can be that girl who makes engagement photos and makes money off of it. And hey, if the wedding doesn't work out or it never gets to the wedding, you're still getting paid because everyone loves to put their engagement photos online. Now, number 17 is social media marketing clients. Now, you know social media is a very valuable marketing tool these days. You get online and you see advertisements all day long. Someone has to create these advertisements. Now, one approach to finding these clients is to cold outreach them. You can DM them, you can email them, but the easiest way to get these clients is through them being inside of your personal network and being inside of the world that you already live in. So let's say you're someone who's a photographer and you also like skateboarding. It would make sense for you to look for clients who need social marketing material inside of the skateboarding world because you are familiar with that world and you will have an easier time finding these clients because these are the people that you are around. It's going to be way more difficult for you to be a skateboarder and go and try to get wedding clients or engagement clients because that's not exactly the niche that you're in. You want to focus on trying to find clients inside of the lifestyle that you're already living. And that leads to number 18, which is social media content. Maybe you don't want to work with brands. You don't want to create marketing material. What you can do is work with individuals. Maybe once again, you're familiar with skateboarding and you know there are some semi-professional skateboarders who are starting to make a little bit of money. They're trying to grow their name online. You can be the photographer who makes the content for them and you can get paid by those people. I've talked about this before. The fitness industry is the best example of this. So many fitness influencers are making a ton of money through affiliate marketing and they need content all the time. I talk about this in my course quite a bit too. I call this new media. Today, social media provides more opportunities than ever for photographers to create media for influencers because budgets have trickled down to individuals. So there's a bunch of people out there now making $100,000, $200,000 a year, and they're making all that money through their social media, and they need content for their social media, and they're willing to pay for it. So you can be that photographer, and the easiest way, once again, to get those jobs and work with those individuals is to be inside of those worlds already. So if you're into fitness, look for people who need fitness content. If you're into skateboarding, look for people who need skateboarding content. Now, number 19 on this list is stock images. Now, I believe this is hyper saturated at this point, but it is still a way for you to make money with your photography. You have a bunch of photos sitting on a hard drive. You can upload them to various stock photo websites and you can get paid a commission when those photos are used. Now, like I said, this is extremely saturated now. If you did this 10 years ago, it was much more lucrative, but it is still a way for you to make some side money with your photography. And once you upload the photos, you don't have to worry about them anymore. You can just get paid as they get used. So this is a very good passive source of income, even though it's still saturated. And when it comes to passive income and having multiple streams of income, every single stream you have counts. Even if it's only you know $10 a month, it's still some extra money coming into your business. Now, number 20 on this list is large scale print licensing. Now, if you ever go into Target or Ikea and you see photos that are available for purchase, these are photos that were licensed from an artist. So if you're a photographer and you have a lot of crowd pleasing images, stuff that you think could be in one of these stores, it could benefit you to get on LinkedIn and start doing a little bit of research and figuring out how to get in contact with the people who make the buys for these products. Now, I have no experience in this. I've never done this before. I do know a couple artists who have had their work in Ikea. And from what I know, it's a big licensing fee up front. And then you're paid small commissions and royalties after the fact. I don't know if they negotiated bad deals. I don't know anything about it. But what I know is companies are looking 
for artwork that is pleasing to the masses. And if that sounds like you, it could benefit you to try to find the right people and do the right type of networking to get your photos in these stores. Now, this is one of the more heavy lifting items on this list. You're not going to just be able to do it overnight, but if you can find those contacts, there's definitely a lot of potential there. Now, number 21 is family portraits. This is a tried and true way to make money with your photography. And one of the great things about family portraits is as a business, it's very easy to get a high churn of clients, meaning that you work with one family and they share your work online or they tell their friends that they worked with a photographer who was really good, he was really professional, and you can get more clients that way. You see, families know other families, so it's really easy to market yourself as a family photographer if you do good work. The same thing applies to graduation photography. Now, graduation photos are better if you're someone who's maybe a little bit younger and you're in the demographic of people who are graduating high school, graduating college, you can get clients this way. All you got to do is work with one person, make their grad photos, and allow them to spread because obviously one person who's graduating knows a lot of other people who are graduating. So if you do a good job with this, you can get clients that way. Number 23 is real estate photos. This is pretty obvious. Anytime a house is listed on MLS or any of these different websites, Redfin, they need photos for it. When I sold my first house, I actually did the real estate photos for it and we sold our house in one day. It was pretty awesome. Felt accomplished as a photographer. Now I can add real estate photos to my resume, but this is a pretty easy industry to get into. All you got to do is find real estate agents who you know are going to be selling houses, offer up your services and go into the homes, be professional and create the photos and do a good job with it. Now there are some ins and outs to how you can be better at this. I know a lot of people use 3D cameras now. They create VR type things so the photos can be clicked and dragged. That's something that you can look into on your own. Number 24 is corporate headshots. This is another tried and true way to make money with photography. All you got to do is find somebody who works at a corporate business, offer up your services and say, hey, I bet everyone needs updated LinkedIn photos. I bet everyone needs updated Salesforce photos, updated badge photos. I can do it for this cost. This is really good because all you have to do is set up your backdrop and your lighting setup one time and you just file people in and out and make their headshots for them. Now, a funny story is me and my buddy Chris did this in New York once and it was one of the worst experiences of our life as photographers. We totally botched the job and it was terrible because a lot of people didn't like the way they look. So there is a professional element to this. You want to make sure that you know what you're doing and you're creating images that look good and professional, especially if a company is paying you and they're going to use them on their entire employee directory. Now, number, where are we on this list? 25 is macro product photos. This is really cool because macro photography is difficult. So if you have a macro setup and you understand how to get detailed photos, this can be very lucrative in online marketing and very lucrative in different web stores because products that are small are really easy to ship. That's why there's so many jewelry industries online. So if you understand how to make good macro photos, you can cold outreach to all these different brands who are trying to make money online. They'll send you the product. You can create the macro photos for them. They can use them on their website, social media, etc., and you can get paid. And the reason this is included on this list is because macro photos are a specialty and not everyone knows how to do them. 29 or 26, excuse me, custom phone wallpapers. If you're someone who understands how to create wallpapers, especially for the new iPhone iOS, there's a lot of different customizable options, a lot of different ways that the numbers on the clock can fit behind or in front of images. And now there's more of an opportunity than ever to create really cool phone backgrounds for people. And you can get creative. Maybe you have a day photo on the lock screen. And when you swipe up, it's a night photo or vice versa. There's all different things you can do and you can charge like $5 or you can have them up for free and get paid for the advertising on your site. Number 27 is corporate events. I've done this so many times. Essentially, corporations have events. Sometimes they're sponsored. They need recap photos. All you got to do is find advertising agencies or find corporate agencies who work with these brands to put the events together. Maybe it's an event planning agency. doesn't matter. You can be the photographer to create the recaps for all these events and make money that way. Typically, this is like the same rate as doing like wedding photography or something like that. Next up is brand activation recaps. This is something that I've done. Typically now corporate agencies and advertising agencies and all these brands working together, they love to do activations, which means like at an event, a brand will create a booth or create some type of experience for people going to the event. And what these agencies need is recaps to send to the brand and they always need photographers for this. So the easiest way that you can get these jobs is to start networking with the right people and find people at agencies who do these types of activations and become the photographer who goes to the activation to make the photos. I've done this a lot with different agencies in the Southeast and the most recent one I did was at the 
the Atlanta Open tennis thing, tennis tournament. I don't even know what you call it. There was a wine company there. I made all the recap material for them. Next is interior design portfolios. Obviously, if an interior designer is decorating a house and making it look beautiful, they need photos for their website, for their Instagram. They need photos to promote their services, and you can be that photographer. Once again, the key to this is networking, finding the designers who need the photos, finding the people who need your services and the value that you provide, but this is a really cool way to see awesome architecture, see awesome design if you're someone who's into that world and you like homes and you like interior design, this could be something for you. Next is web licensing. This is something that you can do for social media clients, website clients. Basically, if you have a type of photography, maybe for example, you're like me, you have a bunch of Atlanta photos, a company will come to you and they'll say, hey, we want Atlanta photos on our website. Can we use your images? And you charge them a licensing fee. Typically, it's a yearly fee. Maybe it's like 1000 2000 whatever package you want to give them, and they can use those photos. I've done this on people's websites sites as well as on social media accounts. People have asked me to use my Atlanta images so they could put text on it, so they could do advertisements with it, and I license them the photos, and there's a very specific web element to those licenses, meaning they can only use it on their websites. They can't print it or anything like that. Now, number 31 is large volume print sales. This is when you go to a business or a hotel and you say, hey, I'll sell you a package of 25 prints for this amount of money so you can decorate your entire office space, you can decorate your entire hotel space. Now, this is typically handled through agencies. It's not always going to be handled through the business itself unless that business is independent. So there's a variety of different avenues that you can take to get yourself in these places. But once again, you want to have work that's more crowd pleasing, typically aggressive type photography or anything like that might not find its way into a business or a hotel. But if you have pictures that you think are suitable for this, one of the best things you can do is just cold approach different hotels and different businesses offering up your service. And like it always goes with cold approach, maybe you approach 100 people. People, if you just get that one person, that can be enough business for the entire month. Number 32 on this list is Patreon and subscriptions. Maybe you're someone who has a small fan base online. You're growing and finding those 1,000 people who find you interesting. You can have a paid service like Patreon allow them to get more content or more media from you. So let's say you have that small audience and you post behind the scenes videos to YouTube. Rather than trying to get paid that YouTube AdSense revenue, you can just have it be on Patreon and you tell people it costs $4 a month to get this behind the scenes. And if 50 of those people come, four times 50 is 200 extra dollars a month. And they're adding this to pretty much every social media platform now. Instagram has it as well. And I think it's just going to continue to get bigger into the future. Paying for access is going to become huge for small creators. And last but not least is concert photography. Now, this one's a little bit tricky to get into, but when it comes to concerts and events, the best thing that you can do is find online media publications who need media for their websites. Things like the Atlanta Journal constitution, things like different music blogs, different um, lifestyle blogs, they are going to need images of concerts that come to town because those websites make money off of their advertising and they need media to contribute to the site to make their money. So essentially it's a giant circle business model. You're getting paid a percentage of what they're trying to make for whatever they're posting online. And the best way to get these clients is once again, approach them and offer up your services. And like I said, it's going to take a little bit of time to get there. You might approach a hundred people, you might approach a hundred different opportunities and only get one. But once you get one, that snowball begins to form and it becomes easier after that. I've done a bunch of concert photos. I did these for different things. It was actually for brands who were sponsoring events, but it was the same exact concept. I did one and then it snowballed from there. And there we go. That is 33 ways you can make money with your photography. I hope this got some ideas spinning in your head of how you can make money in the remainder of this year and going into 2023. If you want more information on how I operate as a creative business, how I structured my creative business. You can go to moderncreativemoney.com. It's linked in the description down below and you can get my course for half off right now. It's over three hours of all the information that I know about operating a creative business, the ins and outs of clients, the ins and outs of writing offers, the ins and outs of finding an audience and making money on social media, as well as making money with physical products. And you can get nine workbook pages to help you along the way and use in your creative business long past the time you complete that course. So check it out, moderncreativemoney.com. Like I said, the link in the description down below. Appreciate y'all for watching today's video. And if I left anything off the list, feel free to drop it in the comments and help out everyone who is looking for different ways to make money with their photography. 